Hi, I'm Allison Dubois. And I'm Tom McMullen. And today we're going to talk about your calling. I often have people asking me about their calling. What's their path? And I'm sure you get a lot of that from your clients as All well. All the time. So Tom and I wanted to share a little bit about our own path so that maybe you can learn from our journey. When I was a little girl, I always had the news on and I was always watching specials on murder. And I know that sounds terrible and it's a reflection of my mom's parenting, but I was fascinated by true crime. And the Atlanta child murders were taking place around the time that I was, I don't know, eight. I was very small, very young. And I just continually decided as I, I think I hit 10 years old and I decided I'm going to be a lawyer and I'm going to put those bad guys away, the people that hurt children. So I felt like in childhood and moving forward that that was my calling, to be a prosecuting attorney and to put bad guys away so they couldn't hurt children. As I got older, I decided I'm going to go to college, I'm going to get a degree in political science, I'm going to go to law school. So that's what I thought was my path, that was my dream. And moving forward, I got my degree and I also during this time was having premonitions, I was talking to dead people, I, I just, I thought everybody could when I was a young person because you only have your own reference to draw from, you know? <laughs> so I thought that, you know, that was just a part of me, not a career. I, I had no intention of becoming a professional medium. Uh, I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, now, instead of becoming a lawyer, one of my best friends is a prosecuting <laughs> attorney and she's amazing. But my point is that through childhood, my interest in crime, in violent crime specifically, was a part of me. It was a part of my soul path in that I was supposed to work murders, help put the bad guys away, just not in the way that I had intended through law enforcement instead of profiling them and head tapping them and trying to pull the information that we need to move a case forward. So what ended up being my calling ended up being much broader than I thought. It wasn't being a lawyer. I would be in court. I was used in court many times, but not as a lawyer. And I think I've done actually more good as a medium than I could have as a lawyer because I help people to breathe, to rejoin the living, so that they can move forward in their lives. And it's really what our deceased loved ones want for us, is for us to get as much out of life as we possibly can. So what I dreamed I would do, what I had aspired, what I aspired to be, all of that was important that I follow that path, but not for the reason that I thought. So for me, that was what seemed to be the grand plan in becoming a professional medium and uh, helping law enforcement, which I'm not doing as much now. I, I focus more on the mediumship. As we go through life, we evolve and our interests change and we feel drawn in other arenas and that's what's happening in my life right now but I have gotten to live out my truth and I, I feel like I understand who I was as a little girl now quite well and I'm happy for her it's like you did all right you know so for the people out there that think you know that they have to have a calling not everybody really has a calling um, a lot of people do we're all here for a reason I guess the trick in life is to do what you're passionate about, what uh, fulfills you emotionally, and stay stick with that. But usually it's in service to others, or trying to uh, further other people's lives. I find those are most of the callings that I see and people have to do with them being able to help uh, motivate or move forward other people. And for some people, they're here to have a baby that grows up and cures cancer. I mean, you never know what your purpose is and, and until you start getting down the path and it becomes much clearer, mm -hmm. you know, where you're headed. Some people are born to be a mom or be a, be a dad and be a very, very good one. And it's just whatever you're good at, I find, is what you should stick with and, and whatever you're passionate about. There has to be passion involved. I have clients all the time when I ask them, what are you passionate about? And they're like, nothing. And I'm like, nothing. Like, n not the elderly, not pets, not children, nothing. 
some people just don't have that drive or feel the pull uh, to help or to, to uh, create anything, and that's okay, but they have to be okay with that too. And I find often that people want a quick answer and quick make me into something with a calling, and it's, it's up to each of you to follow your heart and to find your answers. Well, in, in what you say about you know, finding a calling, a calling is when you discover who you are and it's no longer about you discovering it anymore. It's more about giving that as a gift from you. But then the journey to getting that is the first part we've got to figure out. As an astrologer, you know, when I get a chart, I know people come in already with a story they're already playing out. And the first part up to college is the family dynamics that will mirror the messages of what the past looked like and what you're used to doing or being. And what happens around the college years, which is what happened to you when you wanted to go into law, right. is that the inner part of you wants to rebel against the old story. It's sort of, so there's this fight constantly between the outside world and the power we give it to define us versus what we really want from ourselves from, from inside our own feelings. And so a lot of times if we choose these inside voices, it deviates from the messages outside and then it's like, are you gonna conform or are you gonna take your journey and your path?